Hello and welcome back everybody to Venezia. And um, yes, I want to qualify one thing. Uh, apologies, I'm a little bit ill. I'm starting to get ill. And I feel like that if I don't record today, I might not be able to record for quite a few days. So I thought I'd record today, even though I'm not feeling the best. I'm not feeling the best. I thought that in the uh, the in the spirit of this series, I'd get a recording, at least one recording done today, so we can get through the next episode. Otherwise, there could be like another massive break in the in the series. I don't want that to happen. Uh, I feel like the next week could be a write off. So I've got a bit of a sore throat. It's you know when you're starting to feel ill. I think it's coming, but I feel like that I could get through today just so. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to try and get through today. Um, and yeah, apologies if it's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, lack of enthusiasm some stuff. It's not deliberate. It's just just I'm not feeling great. And that I thought that I would try and get this in before it's too late, really. And uh, maybe this accelerates uh, the, the problems I'm about to have. But who cares? We're going to go with it anyway. Um, so yeah, anyway, off camera. You have missed quite a bit, like I mentioned that you would. Results have generally been pretty good. Uh, there was this bloody defeat in Fury against Spezia. I just, I don't really understand. I started to lose hope at that point that we were going to have another, or that we were going to have a good season. It felt like it was going to be another season that we'd had uh, previously where like, yeah, we'd improve, but we'd end up in that sort of like top four, top four, but knowing in the title sort of season, that's what it felt like it was going to be. And just played the few next few matches. We got a very fortunate, as you can see, 90 plus five win against Udinese. And um, really, though, that set us on a good run of form, even winning in the Champions League against some, against some good sides. And then the crucial game was against Parthenope, managed by Rafa Benitez, currently in the save. And they played a 4 2 3 1. So it matched up to go to the 4 3 3. So Dalai goes, goes up and Lavia came across. And as you can see from the stats there, like that, those stats do tell largely the, the picture of what happened. We battered them. We were we were excellent in this game. We created the chances. We dominated them. We stopped them creating chances. And we went 2-0 up. As you can see here, look at this. 73 on 73 minutes, we went 2-0 up in this game, having absolutely dominated them and tactically outclassed them. And then they scored five goals from then to the end. Once it went to 3-2 to them, I then went all out attack. And they scored two goals while I had, like, just, you know, five players at the front sort of thing. So the last two goals don't really count. But... Just looking at the, um, I know actually isn't the only thing you should be looking at, but that does, the actually does tell the story of this game, really. Like, we should have scored, or we did score two, we should have scored maybe a third. Um, we dominated possession, away from home to, to Napoli, it was it was so good. It was so good from the boys. And we fucking lost the game, and that put them top of the league by like seven points. And I was like, right, well, that's the moment then where it's gone. 5-2 defeat to, to them. And then I ignored the league table again for a while. But then as you can see, since then, we've won every single game in the league, every single one. And it takes us through to today, where they're not even top anymore. Actually, um, AC Milan are currently top. And it's uh, it's actually pretty close to the top between the top three right now. We're, top, we're part of the top three, ladies and gentlemen. We are part of the top three title race. Can you believe it? We're scoring quite a few goals this season. We're also conceding a bloody lot of goals too, um, which I think is a little bit to do with the mentality, the amount of players we get forward at times. But um, And because we play against a lot of teams that sit back against us too. Top five in possession currently as, as well. Um, Asan signed a new contract it does put a 85 million pound release clause in his contract but his previous contract had three years to go but it had a 39 million pound release clause if we're not in the champions league and just in case like we have like a bad start to the season and we end up finishing fifth or sixth or something just just in case that happened then we lost him for four, for 39 million i feel like that this was the, the lesser of two evils because that it guarantees us with him to the end of the season. I don't think anybody's going to do that now this season. So it gives us him to the end of the season, gives us a chance to see this title race through. Then maybe we can renegotiate end of the season or if we lose him for 85 million up front, that's probably an okay amount to lose him for. It's a tiny bit lower than what I'd want considering we nearly had him gone for like 95, but that wasn't all up front, of course. But um, yeah, our Steven Gerrard, I hope that he gets his league title for us, unlike Steven Gerrard did for Liverpool, of course. But I hope he gets it. Asan is, he reminds me of Steven Gerrard. It, I don't want to say this because they didn't win it, right? But it does feel a little bit like that Liverpool 08-09 season team that that was the starting eleven and maybe the 12th player were excellent. They just didn't have any depth in the squad to compete with United and Chelsea and the teams, right? But for me, that team should have won the league that year. And it's so sad that they didn't really. Um, not that I'm a Liverpool fan or anything like that. Uh, just that specific 08-09 team, I felt like they deserved it. The manager deserved it. Certain players deserved it. Xavi Alonso, those players, they, they deserved to win it that year um, in a lot of ways. Ultimately, they didn't win it. 
so I guess they didn't deserve to win it. But there, there were a lot of, I guess the best way to put it is there were a lot of, basically the best way to put it was of all those Liverpool teams in that era under Benitez, that was the one time they got really close. And um, I should, I, I feel like they should have won it. I can't say they deserve to win it because ultimately whoever wins it deserves to win it. But the, perhaps the wording is they should have won it. Um, and I feel like we've got that sort of team here, not in terms of like player profile or the tactics that we play, but in terms of like, we are the team that's sort of up there, but isn't hasn't quite got the depth as the other teams. But if our starting 11 are fit and we play our tactical plan to perfection, we'll be all of them. It's just how long can that go on for? I know goalkeeper scored, of course, later in the season. So we've got a bit of luck going our way, maybe in some form. We've just picked up a bloody load of injuries. And I've just played the last two matches with, like, you can just see the names here, right? In fact, let me show you, let me show you the starting 11 for this game. So that was your starting 11 for the game I just played. As you can see here with Mateta up front, um, we're not at full strength in the pivot position. It didn't feel like it was the best team, but we did get the win. But the game before against Palmer, this one was even worse. We had um, yeah, backups everywhere. Both Reader and Mervel had started as our two pivot players. So both our starting pivots were out. And then we have Mateta up front. So you've got your both starting pivot players are out, your strikers. And that's like, if you imagine that team, just use them as an, as an example. For those who remember this team, of course, you had, you're basically, that's like having Alonso and Mascarano both out. And you're playing, what, Lucas Leiva and whoever else would have played in there. And then instead of Torres, you've got your, your David and Go, whoever that is up front. Like, it's, it's a really big drop for us from our starting players. And we had the same thing in this match. And we still won 4 1. And yeah, played some beautiful football too in the Derby model. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? That's the second game I've shown you with like 65% possession away from home. And we've beaten the team pretty com comprehensively in the game. Uh, this time we didn't throw away our, our lead against Palmer, which is always good to see. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much it. I did say the last episode that I'd bring you through all the, the defeats and stuff. And there hasn't been too many defeats, really. You saw this one on camera with me anyway. And then really the next bad result was the Spurs game, which I spoke about already. What did they play against us again? They played a big 4-3-3. Three, three. Yeah, the double striker thing, um, I did I did it late. I forgot to do it, actually. I think it's part of the problem. So partially my fault, that one. But uh, I still think we should have won the game. Uh, and then, yeah, really, the other defeat in the league was the yeah the game I just explained to you. And we, like, we did well. Like, we haven't really... We haven't tactically been beaten since probably that Spezia game where, like, they beat us. They got just got very fortunate, really, I felt like, in the game. We didn't create a lot of chances, though. And we didn't do any possession very well, either, looking at that. Only 43% at home to, to your Spezia. So, uh, yeah, you're pretty much bang up to date, though. That is it. And you're joining me in... This is what I said, like, you're not... Although we're taking bigger leaps in the early part of the season, you don't really miss too much. Like, we're in the title race. We're not out of it. We haven't won it. Like, we're just, we're just there. And the Champions League looks like that. We haven't mathematically confirmed that yet, but we will do. If it does go to the final game, I'll show you it against Vigo. But I think we're going to qualify anyway. So it's all good. So today's episode is going to be AC Milan in the Super Cup semi-final. Then it's going to be the final if we get there. Um, I don't know if I'll show you the Udinese game in the Italian Cup because I don't know if it's that important. I'll probably do AC Milan the Cup final and then Inter. And then maybe AC Milan the league to finish it off in January. So maybe, maybe we'll do four games in this episode. It might be three. I'll see how I feel. It might be just three because I might miss out this Inter game and go straight to the AC Milan game because Inter... I mean, they are a good side. They're not really in the title race right now, though. They're sort of out of it, really. But um, we'll see how... I, I'll see how I feel as we're going through. We'll see how we go. But that's the plan anyway, because the next episode, though, is like, I'd probably have to show you those two matches right off the bat. I've got to show you these three at some point, which is in my considering. So maybe we do, maybe we split this into two episodes. Maybe we do like AC Milan today, semi-final, the, the final, that's two matches, then the inter game, making it three. And um, I guess I can conclude January in the next episode, because the whole idea in my head was like, this episode would confirm the transfer winner, but because of the way the fixtures are falling and how we're playing all those top teams, all the, the two fellow title race teams back to back there, maybe I just conclude the transfer in the next episode. And in terms of the transfer window, you have missed the following. Um, not much really. I've sold Bryce. Uh, I wasn't using him and they offered me 2.5 million. That's a 1.5 million pound profit on a player that I wasn't using at all. Uh, Monterizzi has gotten pretty quick. Uh, was he? That's not Monterizzi. That's Monterizzi. He's gotten pretty quick and he's wanted by quite a few teams. Now, Monterizzi, whenever I've played him at centre-back with Clemens, that partnership seems to be the worst in terms of goals conceded. We always seem to concede two goals minimum when they play together, and it's frustrating. He's actually a pretty good profile for playing. If you think about the Zerbi's right-backs that he's used, when he's used like that centre-back profile player at right-back, Monterizzi really is sort of that. So... 
I've sort of got used to using him as my backup centre back and backup right back at the same time because Livermento. I maybe I should start him instead of Livermento because you know Monteries will be with us long term. Livermento won't. But with that 14 dribbling gives us that extra bit in possession in certain close games. So I'm not sure. Basically, what I'm saying is Monteries has become a backup two different positions, although he's a really good backup centre back and a really good backup right back. Is a backup player worth £20 million? Like, if we were to get a £20 million offer from, from uh, one of the Saudi teams, do we take that? I think we probably should. I know I know it means one less homegrown Italian player, but I just feel like that that's a really good offer. So I'm waiting to see if they come back in for him or not. But right now, he's the best backup that we've got. And Ricardo's got in as a starting centre-back for us, and he seems to do better in it as a unit with, with Clemens. Um, in fact, let's look at goals conceded per 90 a second here. Let's just throw that in there as a stat, just while we're talking about this. So just for making it easy for you to see, I've just put them to the top, the three players at the top, and highlighted them. So that's my three centre-backs there. If you look at this stat here, which is team goals conceded per 90, Monteries is 1.54, Clemens is 1.25, and Ricardo's is 1.39. Now, obviously, that stat does not factor in anything in terms of strength of opponent or anything like that. So looking at raw stats like that can be very misleading, but it does support my theory that we do seem to concede quite a few goals. Montrezzi is at centre-back, normally with Clemens. So, yeah, I don't know. This is a stat that doesn't really tell you too much, but it's just nice to know that. And his uh, win percentage is also down, as you can see there. Two generic stats that might mean absolutely nothing or can support your thinking depending on, well, the situation, I guess. So there you go. Something interesting I thought I'd share with you too from my playing. And uh, yeah, there you go. So Montreal, if we get a big offer, he will be gone. Just so everybody is aware of that. Oh, one thing I forgot to even mention. I did briefly mention it, but I thought I'd already shown you it on camera, but I haven't. I mentioned it on my Twitter. So the very next game after what you saw with me, the AC Milan game where we saw us lose 2-1, we played Juventus, right? And we were losing 1-0. At home, I was furious. I was devastated, right? And then I've got to show you this together. We went all out attack. We went all out attack in the very last, we're not quite kick of the game here. 89 minutes on the clock, it comes through. And Oliver Christensen, our goalkeeper, rattles one into the corner and we scored with the goalkeeper. I've got to be honest, like in, in like a normal FM save, I think that might be the first time I've ever seen a goalkeeper score for me in a situation like that. Like, not putting the goalkeeper on penalties or on a free kick. Like, you know, an actual, authentic, last-minute keeper's gone up for the corner type goal. I think it's the first one I've ever seen one. And I've played foot manager, well, since it was championship manager, going back to 0102. Like, I think that's the first one I've ever seen it, which is quite funny how rare that is, at least for, for me and my experiences. So, yeah, Oliver Christensen scored a goal for us, which is something that I didn't think I was buying when I bought him, but that's what we got from Oliver Christensen. And... If we win the league by a point, that fucking goal from the goalkeeper might win us the, the actual Serie A title, which is going to be incredible. Incredible scenes in a situation right there. So let's see what happens going into the rest of the season. And that sets us up nicely to have a look at today's game then against AC Milan. It's, I mean, it's every year, isn't it? We always get a chance to win a trophy straight away because of this cup, the Italian Super Cup. Uh, so let's see if we can do it this time round. Let's see if we can do it. AC Milan are going to play against us in their 4 3 3 formation, which means double uh, strikers for us on pressing forward support. That's what we do against Arsenal, against City, and now against AC Milan 2. That's what we're going to do. Uh, Mateta has been not great for goals for us. Because we do that in this against this formation, it makes it slightly more difficult on who to pick for the team. I guess Chilifia could go as a striker here. I'm just looking at it now. I guess I could do that from the beginning. We, I mean, Vamon's only just come back from injury. But I think that that'll be better because that'll give us Asan and Chilafi as the two strikers. I think that'll give us a better team on the pitch at the start. So we're going to go with that. So your team is going to be Christian Sonny in goal. Goal scoring Christian Sonny in goal. Kukuela, um, Ricardo, Clemens, Livermento across the back. Handle Lavia pivots. Asan 10, Jello right, Vamon left, Chilafi up front. Incidentally, just going through some player performances actually off of camera before we start the game, Van Bommel has been immense off of camera. He scored so many goals. Like again, look at his attributes. You would think top level winger, maybe not quite in this in this save at this stage, not for the Serie A. But um, he's very clinical, and he's good in the air for a winger, right? So he's a threat at the back post when he overhit crosses. So he looks really, really good. I would say him. And also, weirdly, Cucurella has scored quite a few goals for us. He's scored five goals from left back, which has been really impressive. And then finally, Livermento getting seven assists from right back. That's why I prefer him to, to Monterezzi right now. He gives us that little bit. There's certain moments in matches where he's quite advanced. And because of his traits, run, run with ball done right, and his dribbling of 14, he will take players on or be more, slightly more advanced, maybe do something slightly more in the final third than Monterezzi might do. You might play it safe. 
And I think that gives us an added advantage in matches where we struggle to create a little bit. Whereas maybe at times, though, in crucial moments, he goes a bit too far advanced where Monterey is to be a better option. So maybe it's a case of um, right player for the right situation, horses of courses, rather than just picking Livermento all the time. But for now, he's going to stay in. And the last thing I wanted to mention, actually, was, you know how we mentioned about the strikers and how they weren't scoring last season? Let's just have a look at Carl Nygaard. So our, our youth prospect, our wonder kid, with only 12 finishing, that was my one concern for him. But I decided that um, Yuri Alberto wasn't scoring and doing the business for us. So I decided that, okay, let's just give him a go. And, I mean, to be honest, it started off with the... He, he was just scoring the goals that were being given to him, like whipped across the face of goal tapping, penalty here, penalty there, a little goal here, a little goal there. And he scored a hat-trick early on, which inflated his goals. But when you look at that now, over 14 appearances, 14 starts, he's got 11 goals, three assists, and his XG overperformance is 4.99. Minutes per goal of 103.64. That is infinitely better than both strikers last season. And that is in line with what the top strikers were doing for other teams last season. So at the moment, he's been incredible. He has been missing, though, for a few matches, and he's back pretty soon, though. So that is going to be good for us. But yeah, sorry, I, those those couple of little updates might be lost. in it, cause The title might say now, first match, but... Hopefully, I'll remember to maybe reword it so that the, fir the first match can start right now. The chapter can start now because I wanted to make sure I got that in because, uh, yeah, that was that was relevant. Only the relevant thing maybe to throw in as well was that I did consider briefly selling Dardai. I had an offer for like 17 million 10 up front. And uh, the problem was if I was to sell him, I can't replace him with anybody for the same money right now that would be as good. So I feel like that we, we ride with this team. We ride with this team until the end of the season and see how close to the title we can get. Um like Marco Mival's done pretty well as a considering his attributes don't look great he's done pretty well when he's had to come in in the Champions League and stuff yeah I feel like this team's gonna fall just short is my prediction but it seems like the most sensible thing to do is to ride this team to the end see what we can do with it if somebody becomes available for this bracket we can do something but I don't want to sell a key player and try and replace them with just this so uh yeah anyway you bang it up today that's everything so let's get into the game then I've already said the team a second ago that is going to be your team AC Milan, double pressing forward support is going to be us in our 4-4-2 type ship out of possession. Of course, in possession, it plays very similar anyway. And uh, yeah, just the difference of the 4-4-2, I guess, assistant manager says, could play with freedom, okay, is that essentially rather than having a designated 10 and a designated striker, they sort of alternate depending on what side the ball is on. That's really it. And then out of possession as well, uh, one of them will drop onto the pivot, the other one will stay high. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's going to be a team. Let's see how we get on against them. Hopefully... We can get a result here against AC Milan. It'd be good to get them a defeat so they don't keep winning games and go on a massive run. But worried about them doing that, of course. But so here we go. Cool, Venezia. Semi final. We've been here before many, many times. See if we can get one over them for once. Okay, first highlight of the game is going to be 90. Uh, sorry, 15 minutes in. Handel gets it. Travels with it. Plays it to Clemens. Bit of time. Clemens did get a few offers on him, by the way, as well. But they were just no, not quite enough, really, from both Bayern and from Dortmund. Livermento on the right hand side goes really. This is what he does. This is what he does. This sort of thing. Uh, cross it far post. Bam, 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 six, six, bam, 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 and it's right on cue. The two things that I told you off of camera. You've just seen it there. I don't need to show you a bunch of clips of what happened because that's what the kind of stuff happens. Livermento is a bit more effective than the final third. Bam, 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 far post. One onto Venezia. I mean, if this keeps happening, it might be a case of that I need like um, a number 10 profile of player to come on the left wing that's tall, like Van Bommel. And that's the profile player that we go for because that seems to happen quite a few times for us. And that's 1 0 to Venezia. And I feel like that would work better the better our team gets, the more we pin teams back for longer periods of the, of the game. We've conceded quite a few from corners this year, by the way. Again, we haven't scored too many. Um, the thing is, my, my set piece coach it has got set pieces of like 19, but he's not a designated set piece coach. So I don't know if that's having too much of, a, of an effect on, a, on the old set pieces, one of those placebo things. I wish he was like an actual set piece coach just for like the peace of mind of uh, the games recognizing that he's a set piece coach. Um, but yeah, no, he has got a good rating. He just isn't a designated set piece coach like on his contract. But we use him as one. He takes care of all the res responsibilities. Okay, so Ace will play it short to the left. They're going to try and bounce back in. They've got their pivot being covered currently by Asan. Now, Asan, just stay on him. Don't, no, don't, don't. If he gets the ball, I'm going to be furious right now. Okay, now the, that's where the other striker comes in. That's why it's good to have two strikers together. Because I feel like the, if, if Asan was the pressing forward and he goes and the other one was an advanced forward, I don't think he would have sat quite as well there. But um, on support duty, oh, they two footed challenge, love that. But in 1980s football, we're going to go back into Lavia and regain the ball. Uh oh. They go through, I mean, that would have been a disaster. I'd be furious with that. Because a little like right before half time here, that ball was going to get it, puts it to the far post. Keeper collects. This could be a highlight for anybody at this stage. Can we make sure we retreat good? We've got players in the middle for the second ball. That's what we need here. So they go short. Stay on the pivot, stay on the pivot. Somebody stay on the pivot, good. I mean, just, just, just yeah, so let the central forward just get out. Why not? 
Why not? That's annoying from a central fielder's perspective. I'm going to do opposition in instructions in a second. After this uh, highlight concludes, we're going to see what happens here. Assange goes back. We, we, oh, we nearly win it twice. They get the highlight. They go through, headed away. I think we might have just survived it, but I'm going to make sure that these two boys here instantly are getting... Where are they? Yeah, they are. Instantly getting marked and kicked off the pitch as soon as they touch the ball. Okay, late set piece. They go through. They're going to get a goal. They get a goal from a bloody set piece. 1-0 to... Well, 1-1. Um, we'll say revenge. I'm going to have to take Bam Bommel off because he's struggling. Uh, I feel like that if we want to keep the same sort of profile of player there, let's put a sound on the left and let's put Mateta up front rather than put Rainier at the... Last minute of the game. It's going to be a corner. Please give us a set piece goal. We need one of these. The one for ages. Comes back. Oh, it's going to be a penalty. It could be a penalty, this. No. Oh, it's no penalty. Devastating. Well, so keep working up an extra time. We've got a lack of players to bring on now, really, off the bench. We haven't got a lot of pace either, which is the other problem. Um, I mean, Mirvad's the only player I can really bring on that's an attacking player. We could probably go with that and see if that does the business. But, yeah, I'm not feeling great about this right now. Oh, they've gone to a 4 2 3 one certainly. So we're going to change our shape, though. That might help us out because that puts us into our 4 3 3, of course. So that allows me to put the team back into our normal shape. Um, yeah, that might work better for us, actually. That might have just, just done us a favor. They've just uh, they've just done that. Free kick right before half time, extra time. Headed towards go. It's the post. Mateta's going to get it, but that's probably going to be the highlight. Devastating. Late free kick here. Headed towards the far post. Monterey goes up, headed away. Uh, we get it back now. Monterey gets it back again. Monterey's has got. Not too many options with him. Clemens gets it. That now is it gonna be another penalty? That's the second time in this game. The exact type of scenario has happened. The first one wasn't given. Same end, same referee, of course. Let's see if he gives the second one. Please just give this one. Yes, we get the second one. Who's gonna take it? This could be it. Who's gonna take this? I just list it in order of who's the best. So it's whoever, whoever's next up. Rainey's gonna take it. Ready with the penalty. Shoots. Misses. We all knew it was coming because we don't. We can't win a trophy. We can't win this trophy in particular. It's uh, frustrating. 1-1. One, one. Right, this is going to be the last kick of the game, surely. Goes into the box again, Hassan. Takes a touch, goes around the defender. Plays it across goal. Oh, it's cleared away. Oh, I thought that was it. There was an injury a second ago. We are over time. There you go, penalties. It's going to be penalties. Go on then, lads. See what you can do with it. <sighs> Devastating. It's gone to penalties. It's saved. First one is saved. Milan missed their first penalty. That's a good start for us. 1-0 one, one, uh, one to us. Second penalty for AC Milan. They score. 1-1. One, one, two penalties each. Hassan's missed it. I don't believe it. Christensen saves another one. It's currently uh, one. Oh, no, two, one to us on penalties. 2-1. Three taken each. If they miss this, we're in business. Come on. Come on, Jallo. Come on, Jallo. Make it happen. Yes. Match point for us. Back-to-back -back match points. Either they miss. If they miss this or we score the next one, we've, we've won. We just want one of those two things to happen. They score. It's our chance to win it. Who's going to take it? Mateta. Oh, Mateta's hardly scored the goal this season. And he looked like he was getting blocked off as he was running through. And he scored! And we'll win the game on penalties. It's going to be a penalty victory for Venezia. We win, we'll say... Made the doubters eat their words. We'll say that. Well done, boys. Underdogs in the game. Beat them on penalties. I'll take that. We were pretty good as well, tactically, throughout the game, which was nice to see as well. And we're going to play Atalanta in the final. So we've got a good chance to uh, to win this, really. We played them recently, right? I played them recently off camera, I felt like. It was actually ages ago. But I remember the game because uh, it was chaos, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah. They play a 3-5. No, no, they played a 4 4 2 They got a new manager, right? Yeah, they played a 4 4 2 That's right. So we'll see what happens. 4 4 2 in a cup final. Can we do it? Can we get the uh, the job done against them? I'm assuming he hasn't been sacked yet, but they are quite low on the table. Is it still. Who is it? Yeah, it's still Marcelino. Okay, they're going to play 4 4 2 against us then. So I'll see you in a few days for the cup final against Atalanta. Okay, here we go then. It's going to be the cup final against Atalanta. I'm looking forward to this. I think we've actually got a chance this time. Well, I always thought we had a chance before, but like. I've beaten them once this year, but the game was chaotic. Like we could easily have lost it in a different in a different way. We scored two early goals, so a lot of things went our way that you don't guarantee each time you play them. So there is that. But I just feel like that it's, it's not Inter Milan. It's not. AC, it's not, It's just the fact that it's not Inter. It's not Juventus. It's not AC Milan. You know, it's, it's Atalanta. It's not one of the the top sides with the big reputations that can that could do in the cup final, right? So here we go. Italian Super Cup final, surely our best chance of winning a trophy so far. And I hope that it's going to be our time to win one. And your team is going to be... 
Christensen in goal. Cucurella, uh, Ricardo, Monterezzi, Livermento across the back. Handel, Lavia's pivot. Asan is a 10. Van Bommel left, Chilafia right, Euroberto up front. Clemens is suspended, by the way. So that is why he is not involved in today's game. And uh, yeah, and obviously our young striker is also out with injury. System manager says the fans are fantastic for us, got there and win it for them. I love that. So it's going to be 4-4-2. Edison's going to be the one that pushes up, the right central fielder, which means he's on the right. Asan's got the offset to the left, which is the opposite way around how we normally do this. That's a shame, you know, because I like it the other way around so that Van Bommel can tuck in as the 10 on this side, then Kukuel is the more attacking wing back. So we're going to have Asan to be behind Edison. When they lose the ball, Asan's going to be there ready to counter. And then it means that Darun's going to drop really deep to get on the ball and get himself out all the time. That's what's going to happen with these two here. So... What we need to do is make sure then Darum, when he, he drops, he's got somebody on him immediately, which means Chilafia is going to go here. If that's going to attack, that will do there. Now, because the gap is this side, I feel like that Livermento needs to be maybe the more attacking wing back this time. Um, it could be that one of these two inverts. We'll leave it like this for now, but I can see myself maybe changing up Kukueta and Livermento in terms of who does what here. But let's see how it starts. We'll go with that at the start. Come on, Venezia. Cup final, can we do it? There is going to be your team in our 4-2-3-1 shape. Playing against the... Double-check they're playing the 4-4-2, of course. And they are. Edison is higher and he's on the right. Let's just check then early on to see what the wingbacks do. So they get to kick off. So instantly there, Dodo immediately gives it away, doesn't he? He's the inverted wingback. So he's going to go in centrally, which means on then our left side, Dodo is going to be coming into this area. So he's going to be running into a handle is anyway. And Kukurel is there. But what we could do now is I could maybe go like this. And maybe that gives us a nice bit of balance because Kukurel is going to be going into there and dealing with the inverted fork. Although he's going to have the, fork, the actual winger, sorry, to deal with as well, I guess. Um, let's just leave it for now. Let's just see what happens. But at least we know which one's going to be going in. See how he goes into there. So he's actually going to go on the ball here as the, as the pivot. But Asan's already there to deal with Edison, really. That's fine. Well, to deal with him, but then also... Oh, I might turn this over here. Oh, I was close. Yeah, just watching that. At least we know which one's going to invert early on. Just watching his positioning here. So Van Bommel's actually picking him up at the moment, not um, not the advancing Edison. But that's fine. That's actually fine. Whether he, whereas if he wants to advance there, that's fine. That's what the pivots are there for as well, right? You've got one to a mark, one to screen as the two strikers there. That actually looks okay to me from a numbers perspective. That actually might work as it is. Because right now what's happening is just that... Asan just picking up Dodo instead. When I mean, it's only been for kickoff. When they build up, he will be deeper and Dodo won't be that inverted that early because when they start from a goal kick, Dodo will be in the right back position at the start at the very least. So something to watch out for. Okay, they've started off the ball pretty high from the uh, from the highlight. Clipped his head away. Van Bommel heads it away again. Dodo's going to get to this and ground the right-hand side of our defensive line. Um, he's don't know what he's doing here, but he gets nearly tackled, gets it back. Clipped towards the far post, headed towards goal, and it's a goal for Atalanta. Lookman scores. I'm bloody annoyed about that. That's 1-0. Cucurella gives it away. Uh, they're going to try and counter on us here. Although they give it away, actually. Uh, Chilafia into Yuri Alberto. Rolls the defender. Shoots. And he scores. Yuri Alberto scores. Very rare for us, that is. He spins the defender expertly. Makes a good little touch. And makes it 1-1 with a good finish as well. Good to see that. Let's watch it again. Because it doesn't happen that often for us with a striker being this sort of clinical. Uh, yeah, we watch the reverse angle. Here comes. And they give it away. They turn it over right here. Double pressure. Uh, Lavi and Sachilla Fia and Thierry Berto. Do you on the defender? Love, I love that little touch. Little Torres-like, wasn't it? 1-1. One, one. Okay, this is a whole lot. Right before half time. this will be the very last thing that happens. Montreuzi gets it. Plays into Lavi. He's got loads of time and space. Turns and plays at the And uh, Doesn't have too many options here. Plays a terrible pass, but we get away with it, I think, really. Chilla Fia across to Cucurella. Now, got overload here. Can we use it? Cucurella. Turns and plays back to Handel. Handel back into Cucurella. Got two players here against one, if we can get it to him. Ricardo, left footed. Should open his body up. Does Cucurella. Go back inside to Ricardo again. Um, I feel like they're going to get impatient and try and force this. Although they get it through perfectly to Asana. Asana to Chilafia. Play it across. Oh, he shoots himself. He could have just squared it. No. All he had to do was play that across the bloody box. And that would have been 2-1. What a shame. Yeah, I'm going to change Lavia to Regista just so he doesn't force a rotation and go in there. I don't want him to, to do that. And I might make him more attacking this side. And then we'll do what I said, basically. Let's go, let's go with this and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to bring on Mateta up front because I feel like that's the right change at this point. And Vavon was going to come off. I'm going to put on Rainier on to the left side. And I'm going to make Rainier the advanced playmaker, though, I think. And we'll move up Chilipia to the left. I'm watching the road. Okay, so Dodo's no longer inverting, but we've still got the same thing going on here. So what I'm going to do is just take off Cucurella. So we're basically just going to invert the two wingback roles at the moment. Okay, set piece. Dodo, far post. 
Assan shoots. Oh, it's blocked. That was nearly a chance for us there. Monteries, he's really struggling with um, with his fitness. I don't think I've got anybody else ready to play centre-back, though. So that's not really going to be a change that we can make. Assan's on a 6.5. Assan, go on. Do, do it for us. Basically, what's chill here? Shoots. Oh, goes just wide. Got one more sub to make here. I feel like that... The better change is, is Jallo, but I mean, Chilafia is doing pretty good. So, I mean, it could be, it could be that we take off Lavia, I guess. And we do, we do that. And then we can get on Jallo in that position. Let's go with this. Okay, 10 minutes left into the game. Darlow's going to pick this up for us. Plays it into uh, Mateta, who takes a heavy touch, but keeps it. Uh, links up with Rainier. In to Asan. Asan playing deep and I'm playing the Jabby Alonso role for us. Dardai, left hand side, got two players. Uses Dorgu. Dorgu's got plenty of time and space. Travels with it, travels with it. Goes on the outside. Plays it back to Dardai, loses it. Oh, they could counter us here. They could counter us. Are we going to get to that? Monterezzi gets to it. Good, Monterezzi, love it. Livermento. Livermento. It's a bit of chaos. The structure of this game's gone a little bit. Dardai gets it deeper. Asan into Chilafia. Chilafia's got options with him. He's got options. Jalo goes through. Plays it across goal, does he? Goes through. Shoots himself. It's deflected. Oh, and it's gone for a corner. Oh, I thought Mateta was going to score. Well, actually, I thought the player on the ball was going to score, but stays 1-1. It's getting tense now. This is our best chance to win it. Come on, lads. I know we've got players out, but come on. Here we go. Chilafia shoots. Deflected, and he goes in. Chilafia gets the goal. It's going to be 2-1 to Venezia. That is a big, big moment in the series. Could be our first trophy. 2-1. Come on. It took an absolutely huge deflection as it hit somebody in the box. I'm not sure who it hits. It hits somebody. This isn't a clean strike on goal. This definitely takes a deflection. There it is. Straight off. Oh, I'm not even sure if that hit our own player, but who cares? 2-1. We're into added time. First minute's gone. Second minute's gone. Are we going to do it? There's a late highlight. We, we start off with the corner. We've got two players back on the corner. Three players back on the corner. Very defensive. There we go. Back to Dorgu. Gets it. Runs it on the left-hand side. Hope he's not too aggressive with this. No, he's going to keep going with it. Okay. Swings it back into Dardai. Dardai into Asan. Just don't give it away, really. Dardai shoots from distance. It's the post. Chilafia hits it over. That's it. That'll do. To waste the time. Waste that time. Gotta be. Final whistle. Venezia in the Roberto De Zerbi recreation series win their first trophy. We win the Italian Super Cup. We finally won a trophy. Well done, boys. Absolutely fully deserved. Probably a year overdue, to be honest, but we got there in the end. We got the Italian Super Cup and we've won the trophy. Let's watch the boys lift the trophy. Now, beautiful white kids. I love the kits that we've got here. What a, what a football club. What a football club. What a team. And um, fortunately, we didn't win it in, uh, in Venice. It wasn't the league title winning it at home, but it's a trophy. First cup final for Venezia um, and Venice, the city of Venice. So there we are. Love it. Super Cup. We absolutely love that. For the first time with us as manager, we have won a trophy with Venezia. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. We'll soak in the moment here with the boys. With the trophy. I think Monterey's is there lifting it. Bless him. He's a, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's a club captain at the moment. So there you are. Love that. Monterey's, he might be actually going pretty soon, but he was the first captain. We had an Italian captain to lift the trophy for us for the first time, which is lovely to see. Venezia lift Super Cup. Venezia win Super Cup. There we go. Uh, we got a bit of money for that as well, apparently, which is which is good to see. Finance is looking good, by the way. Uh, we received. Oh, wow. Wow, that's got a bit of money to us. That's, that's a decent chunk of change for us. I'm not sure if you were AC Milan or somebody that would be that big, but to us, that's huge. It puts us back over 20 million. Transfer debt, incidentally, is way down. Transfer debt is down to only 36 million. That's really, really good. And um, oh, and by the way, the balance is down a bit, but that's with me having requested a training facilities upgrade, youth training facilities upgrade, and a youth intake upgrade. So we've actually upgraded the three different things at the club, and it all starts this month. It starts somewhere in January. So although the money's gone back down, that's with three different things getting boosted up. We keep getting injuries, so I wanted to get the uh, the training improved. So we've got that, and the youth. We, I mean, the youth part of it isn't part of this this plan. It's not really part of the series. But it's like, while we've got the money, while we're in a good financial position, we may as well do it then. Because we don't do it then, we'll do it never. So there you go. I'm so pleased that Oliver Christensen's goal this season has at least been in a season where we've won something. So it's meant something. I know it wasn't in the same competition, but the fact it meant something in this season is, is absolutely brilliant. So, wow, there you go. What a story. We win 2-1 against Atalanta. I win our first trophy of the series. So absolutely beautiful. I just want to see the other seasons. We obviously got to, we got to the Italian 
actual Italian Cup final, didn't we? In our, in just our second season, that was. That's incredible, isn't it? In just our second season, we got to the Italian Cup final and lost 6-2 to Inter in extra time, uh, which is quite quite funny. And then only last season, we had the Italian Super Cup semi-final that we won. Then we got to the Italian Super Cup final and lost it last season. But then this year, we've gone one better. We have won the Italian Super Cup final. We've got ourselves a trophy and we love a bit of that. Um, is it the first time in the club's history? The first time in the club's history. There you go. They've won the Italian Cup before once, but not the Italian Super Cup. So there you are. Okay. Right. My throat has done a pretty good job of, of surviving this early part of the recording. What I'm probably going to do now is I'm going to take a break and record the rest of this episode tomorrow because I just feel like it'd be better for my voice and being able to do it. But um, that was brilliant. I really enjoyed that. And I'm really pleased we carried on for this fourth season. So thank you to those of you that, that reached out while I was posting and tweeting and um, and making the first video and stuff because it was really your responses and not even just the responses, but the people that viewed the videos as well. Um, you're the reason that I carried this on. So thank you very much, everybody. That was good. I, I actually love this series. It's uh, it's really good. I love this team and this club, you know, so good. And it's nice to see Yuri Alberto score. Um in the way that he did as well. That was what I bought him for. That's what I thought I was buying when he just, the way that he scored that goal, that's what I thought I was getting. So lovely to see. Right then, I will see you in just, what is it, a week's time for the game against Inter. I'll play the Udinese game off camera. I'm hoping that we win that. I'll play pretty much just full strength side. I'll rotate a couple of players that aren't really a drop off. So like, I don't consider Dorgu a massive drop off at left back. He's just a very, he's a different type of player. So he'll play, um, Jale will play, probably Rainier will play, just a few of those. So it'd be pretty much the first thing with some rotations. The team should be still pretty fresh for the Inter game. And uh, yeah, wow. Excited for this. Right. Huge game against Inter coming up. And then that might be the last actual game of the episode. And then the episode will end there. And then I'll do um, maybe those two matches in the next one. And we'll conclude the transfer window. But so far, no business is happening as of right this second. Oh, one thing I forgot to bring to you. Conrad Lamer's contract was up at the end of the season. He's probably about the best prototype of a holding field player that I could have got. And we've got him on a free transfer. He's going to cost us a lot of wages. Don't, don't you know, don't get too sidetracked with the fact that it, was, it was on a free transfer. It's going to cost us a lot of wages, like 100 grand a week. But he is an excellent top, top level pivot player. He would be our starter next year. Basically, Romeo and Lavia would go out and he'll come in and that'll be like, in terms of, they're not exactly the same type of player, but in terms of like a starting level player, that means that although we've got our current player on loan in the position, we're buying their replacement on a free as well. So that really does help us out financially um, going into next year. I keep seeing if they'll let me do the buy now thing, but it was 13 million is never going to happen. If that gets down to like four or five, I will do it and get him in now. Because what that does is it means that if ever Dardai is out, I can play Lavia and... Um, I can play Lavia and I can play Lema together. And Lavia can be the more advanced one. He's not really the most creative. He's, he actually is pretty creative, to be fair. So it's... Uh... Anyway, that's happened. That's the only thing you've missed off of camera. Um, I accepted the off handle here. Probably not going to accept it. I just wanted to see what they would get give me for him. So that's what they've given me. If selling him means I can get um, Lema... If it gets to a point where it's like 7 million and it's a case if I sold handle, I could get Lema in now, I might consider that. I will, I will consider it. I'm not saying I'll definitely do it, but I'll consider maybe doing that to just get it through this season. Um, but then we'd obviously be losing handle going into next one. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But okay, I'll see you in a week's time for the game against Inter. Come on, Venezia. Italian Super Cup champions. Fucking love it. Well done, boys. And welcome back, everybody. So there has been a bit of a gap between the recordings. I said to you in the last episode, or in this episode earlier on, that I was starting to feel a bit ill. It's been a week since the last part of this episode. Whatever you just saw a second ago, you saw the lovely transition from Venice. That was a week ago, over a week ago, actually. I don't know what day I started recording this, but um, yeah, I've been really ill. I knew I was going to get ill. I was hoping it was going to be a few days thing, but no, it was a lot longer than that. So uh, yeah, luckily I had an episode also queued up already. So we were already ahead of the game. Managed to get one video edited and out to you. So you wouldn't have, you only really had a, I think, I think it was a week break between the videos, but yeah, that was just me not being able to even edit. It's the editing that took like a lot out of me like while I was ill. But uh, anyway, getting back to the episode. We obviously beat Atalanta in the Super Cup final. We got our first trophy, which is brilliant to see. And we played Udinese off of camera, beat them 3-1. Pretty comfortable, played a 5-3-2. Inter, of course, are going to play. The I was going to say the same formation. They might change it up against us, according to this. Uh, in fact, do you know what I didn't do? I didn't read the, the, the scout report, the analyst report. I didn't read that. 
Okay, so no, they think it's going to be three five two like this. Okay, so that's what I just played against. We'll do the same thing. Double inverted fullback with a Lero, which um, again, like, not I'm in the, in this series. There's like a second part to it, right? Is the first bit was the recreation for Deserbi creating a four to three one in his mold as much as possible. Obviously, the in game adjustments that I'm doing right now. I'm not saying that this is what he does against this. I'm this is me making in-game adjustments against the teams within the match engine within the game. That's sort of what I'm doing. This was like a separate part to the to the series. Is like this is me just making in-game adjustments, taking taking the, the Zubby philosophy, then tweaking a bit of the game model to suit the opposition that we've got, right? Which is something that he would obviously do, and a lot of managers would do anyway at highest level. But exactly what specifically we do might be a bit different to real life because of what I feel like will work against the teams, really. So yeah, that's pretty much why to briefly explain that in case there was confusion for people to have joined, uh, joined the series late. Okay, so they're going to play that. We know what we're going to do. That's absolutely fine. So we have had... Has anybody left since we last spoke? I don't think there's really been anybody that's gone. Oh, no, Mateta has gone for £2.2 .2 million pounds to RC... Uh, to KRC Genk. So we sign him for... On a free transfer, he goes for £2.2 .2 million. Pounds. Good bit of business, that, to be, to be fair for us. And he leaves with our blessing. What I'm basically going to do is hope that... When we keep doing this buy now thing for Lamer, that when it gets to like the last day of January, that drops to like five million pounds ish, somewhere in that bracket, then we we can get him. Um, I mean, or I could use it to try and get somebody else. But I mean, we can get up to nine if we really want to expend nine million on him. We we can get him now. I mean, it's a lot of money that is. If I was to lose Handel or somebody, like Handel was negotiating with somebody, but um, he rejected them. It would be a big, it'd be a big risk, I guess, but. But then you've got Lavio who can play as the pivot as well if you need to. You've still got Dardai there. So I guess we could sell Handel. If we get like a 7.5 million pound offer for him, we could try and turn that into two players. We could try and turn that into Lamer now and somebody else in a different position and try and give us that extra bit of depth in the uh, the title race, which we're definitely in, of course. We're not going in hand. We go one point behind Milan. And uh, and this is a big game here. One of our few really big games left is Inter away. And obviously we play the next episode. We play AC Milan. Um... In that one too. In fact, we've got oh, we've got Parthenope over there, haven't we? The reason I keep calling them Parthenope is I'm not sure if I'm allowed to call them Napoli. So, apologies, that's annoying you, but you've got to understand. Uh, hopefully, why I have to do that. So, yeah, Parthenope are there. But yeah, I'm looking at this right now. You know, we've actually got quite a few home games coming up. The tough games, but they're all at home. We must have played quite a few away ones. We've got three away games at the end of the season. So we really do need to do well here. If we can be into this, is a huge game for us. We need to win this. I think if we're going to win the title, we have to win this. We've got to beat Milan as well. So let's see what happens anyway. Let's get into the game. Let's see how we do. Your team is going to be... Clemens is out injured, so it's going to be... Kuchin in goal with Cucurella, uh, Ricardo, Monterey, Livermento across the back. Handel, Lavia, Pivot, Asan is your 10. Chilafi on the right, Van Bommel on the left. Nygaard's back up front. His first game back for a while because he's been injured. So hopefully he can do the business for us. Assistant manager says, if you can't perform the last match, you'll do well. They've got, um, they've got Georgie in goal, one of our Paris FC... Moneyball legends from uh, from yesteryear, from the, the last FM. So we're going to be playing against the 3 like we predicted. So that's nice and easy. We'll just go across with number 10 to mark the pivot player. Our two pivots and their two CMs, as it were. Double inverted fullback to make the back three in in a rest defense, they like to call it these days. Really just our own possession shape um, and the back part of it. And then Libero is going to go there. That's going to be your team. Let's see how we go. Come on, Venezia. Huge game, this is. Huge, huge game. Because a whole like two minutes in here, Livermento is going to pick up the ball. He's going to travel it to Chilafia. Got a massive bit of space if we want to get it to him. We do now. Livermento gets it. Might have to rework this back across. Um, oh, you're joking me. I don't believe what I'm seeing. I don't believe what I'm seeing. I mean... 1-0. Okay, Chilafia gets it into Remy Lavia. Lavia's got to do something with this. Chilafia goes wide right. We need a bit more support on the right centre back here, please. Oh, lads, what are we doing? Chilafia gets it back somehow. I didn't actually see how he got it back. Just looking at the right centre back, not making the movements. Chilafia, Nigel goes through, hits the post. I don't believe it. No, we bloody needed that. Chilafia, Livermento. Chilafia gets it back, goes wide right, plays across to Lavia, plays it across. That ball shoots, he scores. That's 1 1. Come on, we deserved that. They didn't deserve to go on the left at all. That's the only shot they've had is the mistake from us. I don't believe this is going to be given as a penalty. This is bullshit. We've if this goes in, we lose the game. I can't. I can't see how. I can't see how they're going to have scored two goals the way they have and us win the game. Like the 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 back pass and now the penalty is just ridiculous. Instant like after the goal, we give it away. But Liverpool is going to get this. Plays the Chilafia. A lot of our play comes on this right hand side, doesn't it? 
Um, can we get Hassan dropping off a little more here? Get on the ball? Maybe now? We could, no, not in one pass, we mean two. We go round. But we go to Lavi on the right-hand side instead. Goes to Chilafia, who gets himself isolated quite a bit in these areas with this back three. Swings across into Hassan. Keeper's going to collect it easily. I don't know. This is going to probably be their highlight. But it could be the team, really. So it's just our one striker against their three. Um, what we should be seeing, you and Borella handle. What are you doing? Like, right. I'm going to get angry in a second, I think. I'm going to have to cut out some of my uh, commentary from the uh, from the video because I'm going to get angry with certain players in this team in what we're watching them do. And, uh, wow. Well, I think he's just off anyway, but we'll see. Yeah, he's off. Going to say, I want to see much better... Okay, I'm going to say I want to see a much better display in the second half. Uh, Handel's got a knock. Off he comes. We'll throw on, I think, Dardai and move. Oh, no, he's not fully fit, is he? Um, okay, Inter's got the ball. We've got our striker on. I mean, see, see, like, Rainier, this is your job. Your only job is to stay on that pivot player. That's your only job. You don't need to press the back three as they go through, and they should have scored. It's a corner. The goalkeeper's up again. He's done it once this season. Can he do it a second time? Jallo. Christensen's going to get to it. The goalkeeper. He swings in across. Oh, Alberto gets it back. Oh, it's a goal. Christensen gets the assist. I think we're, we're going to claim that as an assist. It's going to be 2-2. Two, two. What a goal. The goalkeeper Christensen gets. Well, it's definitely, he's got a goal this season. I don't know if it's going to get down as an assist because the defender, I think, controls it, whatever he does first. But Christensen, again, is just an absolute menace in the box. Clips a great ball in. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's happened there. We'll take it 2-2. Two, because two. the last second highlight could be for either team. We've gone back to our normal setup. Sam's going to win this. Jallo. On the counter, got players everywhere. Chilafi is going to be onside. He's onside. He gets the ball. He goes wide. Swings it. Is he up to onside? No, he wasn't. He just missed it. No. Oh, devastating. It's going to finish 2-2. Two, two. At least we didn't lose it in the end. I mean, I'd have been gutted with a defeat there because they did not deserve to beat us. Uh, ultimately, a draw away from him against them is a good result. But when you're that close... And you did so. And the goals we conceded really were the, was the devastating thing as well. Salman Goli for a million pounds to Udinese. And that puts our budget up to like, what was it now? 10 if we want it. it it's 10 if we want to go up to 10. So we can get close to Lame if we want to do that. But um, I'll have to decide that off of camera. Right. So next episode then. Really easy for us. It's going to be AC Milan. Path and Hope game is going to be in the middle of, of a few, I think, European games here. So it's going to be close to them. So what we'll do, we'll come back for the AC Milan game. We'll conclude January. We'll do the maybe the Fiorentina game in the Cup quarterfinal and then the Juventus game in the next episode. I think we'll do those three in the next episode. And the episode after that, we'll come back to the Path Note game and then the two Champions League games. I think that's what we'll do, whether it's the Path Note game, then two Champions League games or the Champions League game, Path Note, Champions League. Whichever way around it comes, that's the way that it will go. Uh, it depends on where the game actually goes in, to be fair. But that's what we're trying to aim to do anyway. But anyway, next episode, we'll start off with AC Milan. We'll start from there and we'll see where we go. So at the end of the episode, we finish off three points off of AC Milan, who we do play next. Obviously, it will get on to head-to-head -head first in the Serie A, not goal difference. Got to be very careful of that. Yeah, result between teams is the primary thing. So you've got to, work, you've got to be careful of that. So we still have to play AC Milan and Parthenon. We do, how do we get on against AC Milan earlier on, actually? We lost 2-1 away. So we, have, we lost them 2-1 away. So we really, we have to win that game. And hopefully by a couple of goals would be nice. If we can win it, uh, yeah, by like uh, two goals to nil, three, two, three, one, something like that, would be great for us. We get ourselves the head to head over them as well. So that'll actually put us top. If um, yeah, if we can, if we if we beat both those teams and don't drop points between now and the second time we play the two teams, if we if we, if we beat Milan and we don't drop points and we beat Parthenon as well, we'll be top of the league by the virtue of the head to head. And that's if Milan don't drop points again. Do they play each other still? They surely do, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, AC Milan have got everybody still. It's only like halfway, isn't it? So they can play. Oh, it's exactly halfway. Of course, they've got to play everybody again. So there you go. Anyway, that is going to do it. That's a new episode. It's going to be a tough end to the season. We have got everything to play for. We've won one trophy already. Uh, the Champions League should be fine. We should easily qualify in that. We'll see what we get in the next episode. But uh, big games coming up. Everybody's getting back fit. We're going to fall just short, I think, is my prediction in the league. Because I don't think we've quite got the squad to deal with it all. But you never know. You just never know these things. I'm getting very much Liverpool 2008, 2009 vibes here. We're going to fall just short, even though it is, it's a great chance to win it. But anyway, we'll see what happens in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all, of course, next time.